Good morning. I am Chrissy from Up the Windy Lane. Welcome back, friends. I have got some great information for you today, and hopefully it's going to be a little bit helpful for that winter garden. So my plan is this year to do a fall winter garden. I think I have maybe planted stuff before, um, but it's not been like what I want to do this year. I've got extra seeds, some seeds that I really go need to get planted and see if they're actually going to be uh, usable and viable. And I just when I was going through all my seeds and there's quite a few things that I can go ahead and plant and for fall and winter even though it's like blazing hot now here in July those will get started and uh, they may grow a little bit slower as it cools down later in the year but I can harvest things this fall and winter which I think is pretty cool so if you don't know about this garden.org you definitely need to check that out so this website is free. You put in your area code, I'm sorry, your zip code, and it will give you the approximate zone that you are in, the gardening zone. I'm in 6B, so it kind of gives me an approximate of my frost dates, and it's not exact, but it will give you a really good idea of when yours is and when you can start seeds indoors. It gives you a really good uh, timeline of things like that. That is what I based my whole summer spring garden off of this year and it's done really well I've actually kind of ran out of room to put some stuff I've had to like make containers and put other things places so I'm really excited to start um, the winter fall garden and be busy all year <laughs> so there are lots of things you can grow in the winter in case you didn't know I'm just gonna run down this and give you a few so you can go ahead and sow uh, more beans and beets. You can do broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, especially some of these that really like that uh, cooler weather. I know that I like to grow kohlrabi earlier in the year because it likes that cool weather. You can also grow it later in the year as well. And I've not had experience because I've not grown as this much stuff in the fall winter, but it actually changes the flavor because it doesn't get really hot and uh, it gives it a a different flavor and sometimes it's a better flavor people like it better in the fall and winter some people grow most of their food through the fall and winter uh, most of their like uh, of course you can't grow tomatoes pepper stuff like that unless you're in a completely different zone than me and uh, maybe you have a heated greenhouse or something like that you could do it then and I do not have one of those my caterpillar tunnel still doesn't have the plastic on it so we're gonna work on that but some others are uh, carrots. You can go ahead and start carrots. You can do cauliflower. Of course, all those greens like spinach and collards. Um, now I did get in a second planting of cucumbers and I do have some of those coming up. So I did plant those before we went on vacation. You can actually do eggplant, um, garlic. You can, of course, do kale. Like I said, kohlrabi, your lettuces, your mustards, uh, things like that. Okra, um, so I finally got my okra started and it has came up. Uh, it came up right before vacation. So I'm gonna get those planted out in the garden. I did not do any early. You can also plant onions and um, some herbs, like you can do parsley. Um, I'm pretty sure you can do rosemary. There's another one that is escaping my mind for the moment. You can do another round of peas, which I haven't decided yet if I am going to, because I did get quite a few of those. Uh, but I kind of like to because it may change the flavor. All right, so you can get a second planting of peppers, but you had to do that earlier. I am a little behind on that now. Mine are doing so slow, um, so I'm not going to worry about that. But uh, potatoes, uh, you can do radishes, spinach, of course, Tom uh, the tomatoes. Now, my other round, my other round of tomatoes are actually my suckers, which are... If you can see me right back here in this one, in this bed right here. So those are all suckers that I pulled off of my plants and rooted in water if you've seen that video. If not, be sure to check that out. And they actually have grown into nice little plants. So that's a great way to have a second succession of tomatoes without planting and starting seeds. You're already like a head start. Um, by having uh, nice little plants. So uh, root crops like turnips, um, you can do those as well. Beets, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna show you a few things that I have done and then um, I will save the rest for the uh, actual, the July's garden tour. So these are like a lettuce. 
of sorts and so this I cut and now it's grown back so I can cut it again and get a, another harvest off of it so these are really great to be able to grow my kohlrabi is right down there in uh, this bed of other things I've got calendula sweet potatoes have kind of gone wild and um, so have the marigolds they're like everywhere but I would really like to do some more kohlrabi and I need to look and see if I need to um, Go ahead and get some of those started i had planted some down in the beds over here and uh, where i pulled out potatoes and carrots so i'm going to show you those as well so i have potatoes in this bed which they're still over there i need to get those out but i got this one cleared out of course my thyme is hanging out over here in the corner i did have some dill i cut off just so i could put this uh hoop net over the top of it to keep the lone chicken that comes out here but i did plant uh, you can see i planted some beans so um, there's some over here too, but they haven't came up yet, but I've got some zucchini planted. Hopefully the squash bugs will stay off of these, but I've also got some lettuces planted in here. You can see those coming up. These came up really, really nice. So I've got a second succession of that. This over here was kind of covered with these weeds that are growing up, but you can see, um, I have a little row right here of, uh, some greens I do have some other things planted in here but they have not came up like I planted some of seed that I wasn't really sure about probably should have tested it before I actually put it out here but I do have carrots uh, where I had planted a second row um, a few of those coming up not a whole lot I had already planted some carrot seeds in between the rows of the other carrots um, whenever I they started coming up so some of those are up i think some of them accidentally got pulled with the other carrots i'm not really sure but um, we'll wait and see how that goes i don't have too many more carrot seeds here so i need to really look and see what i'm going to be using and i may have to order some seeds for fall winter this bed was full of radishes and then i had extra cabbage so i planted these in here they weren't really doing well until i removed all the crazy radish seeds and now these are really filling out nicely. These are a nice purple, um, I think Calypso cabbage is what it's called. And then I have some squash over there that I planted in here. Uh, there's a few other things in here as well, but they haven't came up yet. So here's a crop you can plant for over winter. Of course, you've got cabbage. Uh, this is kale that I planted in the summer and it is still going. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna let it go and become a biennial because it will actually produce seed next year i don't know we'll wait and see i think i've decided that i want to dedicate um, either one area of my garden or one bed to seed production mark everything uh, label it so that when it comes up if it's biennial i'll know to leave it um, but like carrots and things like that if i have a type of carrot that i really like then i can save those seeds and not have to buy any and it's kind of adapted to my climate which i'm finding works really well so if you look way out there, you can see the caterpillar tunnel. It's kind of, well, one of them is busted and we still have to fix that and get the plastic on. So that's one way that you can uh, help your crops with overwintering. Um, another way, of course, is my raised beds here is I have these uh, PVC hoops that I just put down into the corners and I can put row cover over those. You can also get, I think it's nine gauge wire and um, I think you can buy it by the spool. I'm really, I haven't bought any yet and I'm going to look into that. And then so you can do, you know, shorter road covers. Like you probably wouldn't need, uh, I'm not gonna have cucumbers in the winter. So I wouldn't have to have these so high and you would have a lower row cover. So you can do these, um, you can do row covers on the ground. You can do row covers in um, a raised bed. You could put a over top of containers. So really you can overwinter your food in your garden, on your back patio, out in the field, um, wherever you have your crops at, you can somehow overwinter them. Now I'm hoping to be able to share a high tunnel with you next year. I've put in for that, so I'm hoping that I get that through our uh, state program. Well, not our state program, federal program. So if that works out for me, I'm gonna share about that for sure because um, anybody can apply for that and get um, a high tunnel basically for free depending on how much you want to you know how much you want to get because they allow so much so I'm pretty excited about that I didn't hit the cutoff this year but I got everything ready for next year 
So I'm also hoping that a caterpillar tunnel back there gets put up and I get to share that with you as well, or gets finished, I guess I should say, and that I get to share that with you as well. But I am really excited about overwintering uh, crops. So even in my caterpillar tunnel, if the plastic is on uh, for this fall and then I decide to plant you know, some things inside and it's gonna get really cold, I can even put a row cover over that. So you create a climate inside of a climate. So you create a microclimate and uh, I am pretty excited about experimenting. I'm telling you if, you, if you don't know, you know, if this is your first time gardening or if you're like me and you've gardened for years but you hadn't done it to this scale, maybe you just did a few things and you wanted to do more, uh, just try new things and see how far you can push into the growing season. That is my plan this year um, because some of this stuff is coming on a little bit late and I'm wondering how long it's gonna last into our season. So you might have things coming up like this and uh, wondering what you're going to do with it. So of course these marigolds will die off, but uh, the beets that are hiding out in there, uh, they should be okay, but I can always cover them as well. So I am pretty excited about uh, fall and winter and maybe not having so many bugs and everything. One of the great things about gardening in the winter, the fall winter is such um, so many less uh, bugs and pests. So all those pests that you deal with right now, they won't be out. So that's pretty exciting. So be sure to go uh, to garden.org. I'm gonna leave that for you in the description. You can uh, get this, you can print it out. I have printed this out and used it and I used it to plant all of my seeds for the spring summer. It tells you when to um, start your seeds inside, when to transplant them. And it doesn't give you like a specific day. It gives you like a range for your uh, for where you live so you don't have to be like right on like that specific date that I tried to get mine to where I was seeding or starting seeds every like every day a certain week like every or every week a certain day like on Fridays I would either start or that's when I was outside that's the day I do not babysit or work and so that was the day that I could be out here and I knew what I had to do or if I had things you know I had like a list of things to do so it's very important that if you're going to really you know grow uh, if you're gonna grow food for your family and maybe your community definitely have a plan um, that works out a lot better some of this stuff now I haven't I'm just kind of stuck seeds in uh, this second time but uh, for the most part I've had some sort of a plan and I think that's really important to stay somewhat organized so you know what you're doing and uh, you don't get behind or get overwhelmed with too much at one time. So again, be sure to um, get this, garden.org. That way you uh, know what you're planting, when you're planting and all that good stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I cannot wait to share the garden tour with you for July and uh, just as we go into the fall and winter, what's going on here. Uh, be sure to share any tips that you have down below in the comments. And uh, as always, don't forget to be lovely lights today.